Well, praise God and God bless you. Welcome into the Gospel Music Jukebox Radio Program. Hey, I'm your host, Bishop Eddie Cheney, saying we love you, and God loves you most, my friends. we got a couple announcements we're going to be making just in a few moments. Uh, today is a sad and sort of happy day, because we know that when a brother or a sister in the Lord goes to sleep in Jesus, that... Uh, they're going to a better place, leaving a testimony and knowing that they have fallen in the hands of a just God. We truly uh, want you to please continue to pray for Sister Lynn Vandiver right here in Crossville, Tennessee, as her husband, uh, Sam Vandiver, went home to be with the Lord early this morning about 3.02 or something, uh, best of my memorance, we got the call at 4 a.m. this morning. So please, if you would, remember uh, Brother Sam Vandenberg. Some of you may remember him as he told gospel stories right here on the Gospel Music Jude Box uh, months back before he started getting uh, sickly in his body. When he could, he would come over and share those awesome stories of our precious Lord and Savior. He would tell them and break them down into a kid's form, and he would tell uh, gospel uh, joking and, you know, just bringing joy uh, to the way that he would tell those those stories of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Truly, he will be missed, but not forgotten, for we truly love him and look forward to one day meeting back up with Brother Sam Vandenberg and many more that's gone on before us. Just please remember the Vandenberg family right here in Crossville, Tennessee. They've got family traveling and things coming in from other states. So please, please remember to mention them when you pray throughout this day. Amen. All right, guys. Throughout the program, we're going to be talking about what keeps you from following Jesus. Now, of course, that question is to those that do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So you may want to pass this program along this morning if you're uh, in good shape, if you are born again, bathed in the blood, if you have denied yourself picking up your cross and following that of Jesus. I'm going to need your prayers. Amen. As always, we thank God for our prayer warriors that show up live or by way of the archive and listen into the program and pray for the needs as they uh, share there in the chat room uh, prayer requests and leave encouraging words to one another and share Bible verses. So please, uh, you pray and just simply obey God and share the program, if you can, with as many as your friends and family as possible. Let me give a big shout out this morning to my daughter, Jessica Murrow, in the house. Hey, God bless and good morning. Love you. All right. Uh, also, my lovely wife, Pauline Eldridge Cheney. I want to thank you guys for stopping by and praying faithfully uh, for the program along with the needs that come in right here at the Gospel Music Jute Box radio program. Guys, we love you. As always, hang on. Don't let go. You know the Word of God says you put your hands to the plow. If you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. So keep your eyes focused on Jesus as today we'll be sharing what keeps you, those of you that are not born again, bathed in the blood, what keeps you from following Jesus. That's going to be the topic throughout the program, so uh, give this a listen, and uh, we'll be right back. Grace to me 
deep All oh, but I'm saying Amazing grace to me Praise God. Amen. All right. Sometimes we go through that, don't we? Yeah. People don't uh, understand quite what we're doing, so they begin to try to justify their reasoning of why we're not where we need to be with Jesus. But let me tell you this morning, I bring good news. If you confess Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, hey, You've had to be born again. The only way you can say that is through and by the Spirit of God, my friends. So let me say we love you, the body of Christ, our brothers and sisters, and we thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. So keep on keeping on in Jesus' name. Praise God as we um, <clears throat> going to be sharing testimonies throughout this morning along with the topic. Remember, what keeps you from following Jesus? Now, if you are claiming to be a Christian but you are not following Jesus, then you're not where you need to be in the body of Christ. You're living way below your privileges, and that's why the devil runs rampant in your life. Maybe he's got, uh, you can uh, decide Deceived in a certain area of your life and you well listen to the lie of the enemy and found a way to justify sin that is in your life and you know that it's sin now if you willingly sin well we know that the Holy Spirit of God will not dwell in an unclean temple listen you can't serve God and the devil at the same time so friends I bring you good news today right now Right here, today is the day of salvation. If you do not know Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, uh, I got good news. All you got to do is repent. All you got to do is run toward Jesus. Cast your cares upon him, friends. He cares for you. It don't matter what you've done five minutes. Listen, you may be addicted to drugs or alcohol, or you may have a lying spirit about you, a tail-bearing spirit, or you may be living an alternate lifestyle, as they call it. Maybe you're... Uh, trapped in a homosexual relationship uh, but I bring good news uh, I bring good news this day there is hope uh, for those of you that seem hopeless his name is Jesus Christ uh, I bring good news to you today that are listening to this radio program whether it be by CD radio or uh, ever how you may be receiving it uh, today we're going to tell you the good news if you're alive you're listening right you're here because it's not by accident oh no friends it's by heavenly divine appointment because God's got a purpose and a plan for your life. So please don't reject Jesus Christ because if you reject Jesus Christ, uh, my friends, you're condemned already. If you meet death without the blood of Jesus applied to your life, uh, if you meet death without repenting of your sins, uh, I can promise you that you will lift your eyes in the lake of fire. You will lift your eyes in torment, separated out of the presence of God for eternity, friends, a place called hell. You don't want to go there. Listen, hell is enlarging its borders every day, friends. But I got good news. I said I bring you good news today. You can choose what time there's life flowing through your body. Your heart is pumping blood. You can choose whom will you serve. I bring good news. I bring good tidings. There's hope to the hopeless. Woo! The captive can be set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. And whom the Son is set free is free indeed my friends. So praise God today. Make that choice. Where will you spend eternity? Will it be heaven or will it be hell? Will it be with Jesus or will it be with Satan? The choice is yours. We're praying for you. We're praying with you. We'd love to hear from you. 
if you've accepted Jesus Christ uh, this day, uh, whether it be on this program or anywhere, uh, share that testimony because you're an overcomer with the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb, my friend. Woo, praise God, so stand up. Uh, don't be ashamed. Uh, don't be ashamed uh, of who it is that has changed your life, uh, who it is that has set you free, who it is that has wrenched down his unchangeable hand. I'm talking about the great I am now. I'm talking about our precious Lord and Savior. I'm talking about the only begotten Son of God. I'm talking about the only name that is given on earth. Do you hear me? Among men, that which we must be saved, and that is Jesus Christ. There is no other way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I tell you, I bring good news this morning, but I would ask those of you that do not know him, what keeps you from following Jesus? I want you to think about it just for a moment. I want you to think hard. I want you to ponder on this question until you can answer it truthfully because the truth will make you free. What keeps you from following Jesus, my friends? Turn the TV on Look at what's going wrong Politicians slinging dirt The kitchen's in the church Well, it ought not be a going on No, not that way it's wrong Praise God. 
Woo, it's time the world take a drink of Jesus. Amen. Talking about this morning, what keeps us from following Jesus? Now I'm going to take it just a little bit further. I said what keeps us from following Jesus wholeheartedly. Listen, some may want to personal pleasure and comfort, uh, an easy life, uh, no conflict, uh, to get along with everyone equals compromise. But listen to me, some of us, we want security, home, job, marriage, and family. Uh, but I want you to know that Jesus uh, has to be number one in your life. Listen, some of us, we want earthly rewards, prosperity, popularity, friendship, uh, and leisure time. Uh, but I want you to know that uh, some followed only with conditions uh, that they lay down to the Lord. But Jesus, however, wants complete loyalty uh, with no conditions. Uh, I'm talking about totally dedicated, uh, not half-hearted, committed. Uh, listen, we can't can't pick and choose among Jesus' ideals and 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 hit and follow him uh, selectively. No, 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 friends. We got to do it his way or no way. Listen, Jesus did not appoint to us to be elders who select the the, the portions of Jesus' teaching which we think uh, are irrelevant. Uh, no, friends. We've got to take it from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, we must be led of the Spirit of God, not by flesh, uh, and the flesh and the spirit of war continuously. But I bring you good news if you're born again, bathed in the blood. I said I bring you good news this morning because he that lives in you, if you've been born again, if you've been set free, if you've took a bath in the blood of Jesus, he that lives in you is greater than he that is in the world. But now you got to make a choice. I said you must choose this day. Whom will you serve? Honey, there's two roads before you. One is narrow and straight. The other is wide and crooked. I'm talking about that wide road leadeth to destruction. But that narrow way, I'm talking about there ain't room to neither wave to the right or to the left. But you must keep your feet sure upon the straight path. And Jesus is his name. Do you hear me? I'm going to be talking about that throughout the program this morning as we talk about what keeps you from following. Following Jesus, my friends, be blessed, and we'll be right back just in a moment. Hello, Brother Bishop Eddie Cheney. We love you, and we're praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho, and I was getting a chance here later to listen to that program that was done tonight. Thanks so much for doing it, and have some powerful preaching on there. And one of the things that's on my heart right now that I was listening to on the program also, is you can't half-heartedly follow Jesus. You can't half-heartedly follow Jesus. It doesn't work that way. A lot of people want to half-heartedly follow Jesus. They want to have follow Jesus and know Jesus and have one foot in the world also. They don't want to get rid of the pornography, homosexuality, drug use, and drunkenness, and sin. They want to believe in Jesus, but not go out there and preach to the people on drugs and lay down their lives and deny themselves and take up their cross for praying for others and preaching to others and helping needy people and surrendering their life to Jesus and the gospel. The thing is, it doesn't work that way. You can see it in many scriptures. Jesus said, "If uh, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. He said in the book of Revelation to the people that were lukewarm, I wish you were hot or cold. You can't half-heartedly follow me. He says, because you are lukewarm, I'll vomit you, I'll spill you, I'll spit you out of my mouth. You can read other scriptures. He said that their deeds weren't completed and they had soiled their clothes and he was going to blot their name out of the book of life. Blot their name out of the book of life and they were going to go to hell. You can't half-heartedly follow Jesus. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, Many are going to say, Lord, Lord, and half-heartedly follow him, but lack doing the will of God and putting his words into practice. And he's going to tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You can't half-heartedly follow the Lord. So you got to do like what I did. I had to make that choice in my life to truly make Jesus Lord. I was controlled by pornography, lust, anger, cursing, and so many sins. I would have died and burned in hell. But I accepted and Jesus is Lord and confessed him as Lord. I wanted to make him Lord of my life. I confessed him as Lord. I was baptized in the lake. I turned my heart and life over to Jesus. And the Holy Spirit came into my heart and life and got those sins out. I didn't sit there watching pornography anymore and doing those horrible sins. And instead of that, I took up the purposes of Jesus to start helping churches to go, to start helping people in prison, 
start holding needy people, start preaching to people, and getting people saved, and living for Jesus in the kingdom of God instead of sinning. And that's what any follower of Jesus is supposed to do. Jesus says, if anyone will come after me, Luke 9, 23-26, they must take up the cross, and themselves daily and lose their life for me and the gospel. That is the standard. You must deny yourself daily, take up your cross, and lose your life for Jesus and the gospel. There's no half-hearted following him. If you have finally follow him, he'll just call you a worker of iniquity, and you'll end up splitting hell wide open. So please make the choice to truly get sin out of your life, to truly be born again, and to truly wholeheartedly follow Jesus. There's no half-heartedly following Jesus. God bless all, and Jesus loves you. Let's just go to the Lord right now as there's uh, a few with uh, prayer requests this morning. Please, let's also remember Brother Donnie Sloan and Sandra Sloan uh, there in Knott County, Kentucky. Uh, let's remember all those that the enemy is uh, attacking throughout this day, trying to deceive many. But I bring good news. I'm telling you the truth. The Word of God declares that if you're born again, bathed in the blood, if you have made a decision to deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow out of Jesus, he that lives in you is greater than he that is in the world. Stretch your hands right toward the CD, the radio, the computer, ever how you may be receiving this broadcast. Whether it be live or by way of the archive, we ask you to continue to come in agreement as we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty and merciful. By the power of your command, we ask in the name of your only begotten Son, our precious Lord and Savior, that you would drive away from Brother Donnie Sloan and all those that are ailing this morning, that you would drive away all forms of sickness and disease. We ask that you restore and strengthen their bodies that you would send joy in their spirit so that in their renewed health they may bless and serve you 
for the rest of the days of their lives. Lord, we stand upon your word and your promises now and forevermore. It is in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we do pray. Amen and amen. Well, praise God. Some follow Jesus only with conditions. But I ask you this morning, what keeps you from following Jesus wholeheartedly? Remember that some follow only with conditions. Jesus, however, wants complete loyalty with no conditions, total dedication, no half-hearted commitment. We can't pick and choose what we want to keep and let go of in the word of God. Listen, let me tell you about this man. There in Luke chapter 9, about verse 57, on down to about 62, I believe it is, is where he was talking about he first wanted to go bury his father. I mean, if you really get into that, it's likely that his father was not even yet dead, and the man wanted to wait until he died. He was saying, uh, you know, our priorities. I want you to think about this. As, as some follow Jesus with only conditions. Uh, you see, our priorities do not place uh, 
Jesus at the top, do they, all the time, but they must. This is the only way that it can be done. Jesus has to be number one. He won't play second fiddle, my friends. Some have one foot in heaven and one foot in this life. Listen, they cannot let go of the things of the earth. They say, let me take care of important family matters first, and then I'll do this, or I'll do that, Lord. But let me tell you, some say, let me take care of my financial situation situation first, and then I'll do this, or I'll go there, or I'll go here. Uh, some say, show me a miracle, Lord, that I may know that it is you. Some uh, serve God with conditions. Uh, some say, heal me, and then I will go. Uh, but you've got to hear the truth uh, today, for the truth will set you free, my friends, uh, and only the truth can make you free. Listen, we must be willing to abandon everything uh, and everyone, do you hear me? We've got to be able to let go of these things of the world that has given us a false security and not allow anything to distract us from the calling that Jesus has made in our lives. He must be number one. He must be number one. You must seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. And after this point, he knows what you have need of, whether it be financial touch a, 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 a touch in your body, whether it be a, a better understanding, whether it be blinded eyes open or deaf and ears cleared. He knows what you have need of before you even ask, my friend. So I will ask the question again. What keeps you from following Jesus wholeheartedly? I'm telling you, today is the day of salvation. I'm telling you good news. I bring good tidings. Honey, you're alive today because of God's got a purpose and a plan for your life. Uh, listen, it's not by accident that you stop by right here at the Gospel Music Juke. No, friends. No, no, no. It's by heavenly divine appointment. Uh, God is trying to get your attention. Uh, but you've got to make a choice. Whom will you serve? You see, when, when, when you think about it, and then you recall what Jesus done as he walked Beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the, into the lake, for they were fishermen. And what did he say? He said, come, follow me. He didn't do nothing. He didn't, he didn't reward them with nothing. He said, come, follow me. Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. I want you to think about this today. Have you heard Jesus say, come, follow me? to you, my friend. For his sheep know his voice, and no other voice will they follow. Do you hear him say, come and follow me this day, today, for today is your moment. This is your hour. This is your time. What are you going to do with Jesus? When he had gone just a little bit further, he saw James, uh, 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 James's sons there, uh, Zebedee, and his, and his brother John in, in a boat. Yeah, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them. And they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the, with the hired men. And But see, everybody didn't come. And they followed him. Look in Mark chapter 1, verses 16 down, down to about 20. See, have you heard Jesus say, come, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. What keeps you from following Jesus today, my friend? What are you placing in front of the call of God in your life? What are you placing in front of your soul salvation? What are you putting first in your life? You see, Simon and Andrew left the, their, their sole livelihood, my friend, their job, to respond to Jesus' call. James and John left their job and their father to follow Jesus. Once again, Jesus wants, uh, Jesus went out beside the lake there. Uh, yeah, and there was a large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Apollos, I believe is how you pronounce that. He, he was sitting at the tax collector's booth, my friends. And Jesus says, simply follow me. Jesus told him, 
and Levi, that he, he got up and he followed him. You understand, while Jesus was having dinner at, uh, at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and listen, and his disciples, for they were many who followed him. When the, when the teachers of the law who were Pharisees saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? All hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthier, uh-uh, he said it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Look in the book of Mark, chapter 2 there. Break in at about verse 13 and ask God to write his word upon the tablet of your heart. And I will ask the question again. What keeps you from following Jesus wholeheartedly? What keeps us as a, as a human race, mankind, from following a Jesus wholeheartedly? Listen, the Pharisees were uncomfortable with Jesus' lifestyle and attitude that allowed him to be willing to associate with those whom the Pharisees had judged as evil people, those who did not follow the Masonic law, uh, tax collectors, adulterers, robbers, and, and the like, my friend. Listen, many churches tend to treat people like this by rejecting them, or they do even further. They demand that they change first. Listen, you can't change without repentance. You can't change without the blood of Christ applied to your life. Uh, you first must hear the word and, and and hear what and faith cometh by hearing huh the word you got to hear the word the truth shall make you free but many churches tend to treat people awful rejecting them and demanding that they come out of their lifestyles before they come to church if they're practicing homosexuality or if they're living in a drunkard stuber uh, maybe they're maybe they're maybe they're uh, uh, caught up in a, a drug addiction situation but I'm telling you that the body of Christ uh, is like a hospital I'm telling you that a house that's been donated to God is like the waiting room it should be a hospital for those that are sick uh, listen me Many churches tend to treat people awful by rejecting them and demanding that they change first. But you cannot change unless you apply the blood of Christ to your life. You must be born again or you will in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Today is the day of salvation. Choose you today. Whom will you serve? I'm asking you to jump upon the potter's wheel, for we are the clay, my friends. He is the potter. Let him shape you into what he would have you to be. But I'll ask the question again. What keeps you from following Jesus wholeheartedly? Can't take a heart but broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. I can't take a soul that's in sick, make it white at the snow. Walk on these waters or come the troubled sea, but I know a man who can. I can't cause 
blind eyes to open or make the lane to walk again. But I know a man who can. Some call him Savior, the Redeemer of all men. Boyd London in Idaho, we love you all, we're praying for you, and God bless you, and I was getting some time here tonight, it's later, to listen to the program that was done tonight, what a great program, and what a great service, and uh, I was listening to the part right now, I was talking about just how important it is to call in and share testimonies, and uh, to call into this line and share testimonies, to share testimonies with your family, and your friends, and your neighbors, it's so important. Uh, someone told me that any time you get any chance to do anything for Jesus and the gospel and for other people, you should do it. And that is so true because you don't know, if you call in and share a testimony, someone can hear your testimony that hasn't turned their heart and life over to Jesus or that's struggling in their faith and they can get strengthened, they can turn their heart and life over to Jesus and you can save one someone from going to hell just by sharing your testimony. You can call 1-931-229-0768 and share your testimony. Call 1-931-229-0768. Share your testimony about what God and Jesus are doing in your life. Leave a prayer. Do anything you can to inspire your brothers and sisters. Hebrews 3:12 through 13 tells us to encourage our brothers and sisters daily. It's a daily thing. So that no one develops a simple, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. You should call... You know, testimonies in to be put on the CDs and the play on the programs to this testimony line. You should share testimonies with your family, with your friends, with your neighbors. God directed us out here to Dusty Moyers when he was walking down the road after his stepdad had beat him. And, and um, we saw Dusty out there, brought him into our house, shared our testimony with him, started praying with him, and found out that God had moved him clear here from Marion, Ohio, to find Jesus and get help because he had been in gangs and all the drugs and was going to get killed. And just he turned his heart and life over to Jesus and got the drugs out of his life. He's been drug free for a couple of years, but if we wouldn't have gone out there and grabbed him and shared our testimony with him and started letting him know the good news about Jesus, he might have gone back into drugs and he might be dead now and in hell. That's how important the testimonies are. You can save somebody from going to hell and can help your brothers and sisters stay faithful and be encouraged daily by sharing your testimony. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb or by the word of their testimony. And I'm telling you, we can overcome and we can help others overcome by sharing our testimony. It's very, 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 very important to share our testimonies with everyone that we can. Please. Call 1-931-229-0768 and share your testimony. Let's encourage each other daily. Let's help each other overcome. Let's help people turn their hearts and eyes over to Jesus and get the good news of Jesus out to the lost, dying, and hurting world by sharing our testimonies. God bless all and Jesus loves you. Have a good day. Yes. Well, praise God. Thank you, Brother Boyd, for being faithful with those calls and helping us right here at the Gospel Music Jute Box fill these radio airways up with the glorious good news, the gospel of our precious Lord and Savior. You know, perhaps we need to examine our own history as Christian believers. How many Christians today are guilty of the same sins? 
too often our Christianity is, is in our mouths and not in our minds and on our heart. Uh, often the outsider can see through our, our fads. Uh, he could, Listen, he calls it hypocrisy. He has heard the stories of Christian churches that have been divided by anger and hatred. He knows about the, the deacon who, who left his wife and ran away with the church organist. Uh, listen, Jesus knows how some of the Sunday morning faith people spend Saturday night. Listen, the next, I want you to think about this, because the next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. He was, and he finding Philip, he said to him, follow me, Philip. I want you to know, like Andrew and Peter was from the town of Bathsheba, Philip found uh, uh, Nathaniel and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law. Listen, friends, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. I want you to know tonight that uh, as Jesus uh, come by your way, did you hear the call? Did he say, follow me? I will make you fishers of men. I will ask the question again. What keeps us, you, I, me, them, anybody that wants to? What keeps us from following Jesus wholeheartedly? We must be born again. I'm telling you today is the day of salvation. I'm telling you, if you're tired of being sick and tired. Listen, I don't know whether or not uh, this or that will happen in your life, but I know this. If you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, listen, all these things that we have need of will be added to our lives. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows what you are in need of this day, not your wants, uh, not your desires. Yes, he knows those, uh, but he will supply your needs above and abundantly. I'm talking about about what do you really need in your life? I want you to think about it because the first thing that all these men of God done when Jesus said, follow me, they denied self. They picked up their cross and they followed Jesus. Some of them left jobs, home, family immediately. They didn't ponder it, didn't question it, didn't say, I got to go pray about it, didn't say, I got to research and dissect the word of the Old Testament that I know. Let me see. Yeah, Philip said, uh, this is he who, who Moses wrote about there. Yep, he knowed the word, didn't he? Honey, I'm telling and you, you know the word today. The truth is being proclaimed throughout the land. Have you heard the voice of Jesus say, follow me? Listen, he said to all of us, each and every one that's been born again, bathed in the blood, go ye into the world. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I tell you today, friends, I ask you, what is keeping you from following Jesus? Listen, Jesus says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, he cannot be my disciple. Look in the book of Luke, chapter 14, there at about verse 26. Read the word of God. Ask God to write it upon the tablet of your heart and apply it to your life. He will not take second place. He has to be number one in your life. Listen, if anyone comes to me, Jesus says, and does not hate, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Look in Luke chapter 14 verse 26. Uh, I'm telling you the day is the day of salvation. I'm telling you you must choose this day whom will you serve. Uh, if you're listening today uh, and you're not born again uh, listen you must be born again or you shall in no while see the kingdom of heaven. You can't be just a do-gooder. You can't be, listen, you can't work your way in. You can't buy your way in bargain or trade. Uh, no friends it's through and by the grace and the shed blood on cross at Calvary. There ain't but one way to get to the Father, and that's through and by the Son. There's no other way. If a man try to enter in any other way, he's the same as a thief and a robber, and I'm telling you that all thieves and robbers and liars and whoremongers and those that break the laws of God, yes, sin separates you from the presence of God, and I'm telling you, you will spend, unless you repent, unless you turn from the wickedness, if you die in sin, 
Sin cannot be with Jesus unless ye repent and turn from the wickedness of this world and put Jesus first in your life. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow after him. If you do this, if you do this, if you seek ye first of the kingdom of God and his righteousness, do you hear me today, friends? You will not lack in not one thing that you need. I said you will not lack. God will not have us bagging bread. Do you hear me today? But he's got to be number one when it don't feel like it. When the doctors and the worlds come against you and you feel like all hell is pressing down again you. You've got to realize who and where our strength comes from. He's got to be Jesus Christ must be number one in your life. His will not our will to be done this day. We must raise up our feeble hands and praise God when it looks like, when it feels like, when it sounds like the end is just a heartbeat away, friends. This is important. You must have a made up mind. You must choose this day for today is the day of salvation. You must make a choice. Will you reject or will you receive? Well, praise God. You must be born again. Now listen, friends, and you listen close today. This may be our last opportunity to share the good news, the gospel of our precious Lord and Savior with you. For I don't have, you don't have, we don't have the promise of the next breath we are to take. So those of you that are listening today, maybe doctors have told you a negative report. Maybe man has told you that there's no hope. But I come with good news. I said I bring life. And his name is Jesus. Whether or not he heals my flesh and body today I'll serve him with every fiber of my being I'll raise up hands and give him the praise and the glory and the honor for he and him alone is truly worthy to be praised I said I will not I will not receive report of man did you hear me the word of God says let every man be a liar and God be truth I know that the God can work through a doctor but I also know that God can work and will work through your faith he said so be it how's your faith today my friends are you following Jesus do you believe what you've read are you applying what you read come hell or high water stand upon the rock and his name is Jesus Christ I know it may look like death is on you I know that you even may smell it just around the corner but I'm telling you today friends if you lose your life for the gospel's sake you shall gain life but just as sure as you seek to save your life woo, you shall lose it the word of God for the people of God those of you that have ears let him hear what the spirit saith to the church arise people of God quit living in the gloom and doom and the pity of sorrow it don't matter whether this body be touched today or not what matters is Jesus number one in your life can you praise him when it don't feel good can you sing songs when you're happy and rejoice in your heart knowing that God's got it I said you got a problem today God's got it I said all you got to do is cast your cares upon him for he cares for you but now I want you to be truthful because honey he searches the inner reins of the heart he knows you better than you know yourself do you hear me today I'm telling you today is the day of salvation I'm telling you today you can be made whole you can be set free. Blinded eyes can be open. Deaf can hear. A cripple can get up and walk in the name of Jesus. If we only stand upon the word of God and his promises. I know it don't look like it sometimes. I know it don't feel like it sometimes. But we must rebuke this flesh for the flesh and the spirit of warfare. We must be led by the spirit of God. We must be sold out to Jesus. We must have the blood of Christ applied to our life. We must deny self uh, and pick up our cross and follow after Jesus. Uh, honey, if you got to drag that dead limb behind you, uh, the word of God said, uh, if a right hand offend thee, to cut it off. Uh, for it's better to enter into heaven lame. Do you hear me? Because you're going to get a new body. Woo! One liking unto our precious Lord and Savior. I want you to know today, 
that I know where some of you are standing. I know that you've been pushed into a corner by the world and the world economic situation. And I know today that many of, many of, many of numbers that I cannot even begin to count have put their trust in the, in the work society, in the coal mines, in the gas stations, in the, in the plants and steel mills. But I want you to know today that God fed the children of Israel and there was not a, a corporation around. I said there was not a coal mine to work in. I said there was not a steel mill to run. I want you to know that God can open up the windows of heaven because he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. Listen to me, friends. I'm telling you, when you get like the woman that had the issue of blood, she spent everything she had seeking a cure for her disease of bleeding. But when you've tried all, it's time to give it to Jesus. Do you hear me? If you're tired of being sick and tired, get a made up mind whether you live or whether you die this day do it in the name of Jesus stand and proclaim his holy and righteous name every opportunity you get you be an overcomer and overcome the enemy with the word of your testimony and the blood of the lamb you don't focus on the negative but you stand on the positive you begin to tell people where God's brought you from you begin to tell about the goodness that God's done in your life I tell you this day my friends uh, the enemy is trying to steal testimonies out of the worship buildings around the world. Uh, they say it takes too long. Uh, I got news for you. That ought to be the longest part of any worship service. Uh, when everybody comes together in one of mine and one accord uh, and begins to proclaim the good news of what God has done for you in your life. Uh, as you begin to share your testimony, you are overcoming the enemy. Do you hear the word of God? People of God, please stand upon the word of God as you apply his promises to your life uh, each and every day of your life uh, and if God choose to take me home today uh, I'll go out giving him praise uh, giving him honor uh, and singing songs to him uh, for it is he that giveth life uh, and it is he that can take life uh, stand on the word of God uh, for man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God we are the healed of God even though it don't look like it, even though it don't feel like it, even though you may feel like all hell is assailed against you, you don't have a friend in the world that understands you, but I'm here to tell you you do, and his name is Jesus Christ, I'm here today to tell you there's a hand if you'll reach out and take a hold of the unchangeable hand of the great I am, if you'll keep your eyes picked on Jesus Woo! praise God victory is, victory is yours. It is mine. It belongs to those who believe and receive the promises of God. Woo! I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what my neighbor says. When he pulled a gun and said, if you don't quit that preaching and singing over there, I'm going to shoot you. I don't care. It looks like I'm looking at death. But I know the word of God. If I lose my life for the gospel's sake, woo, I shall save my life. But just as sure as I seek a way to save my life, I lose it. Let me tell you, there ain't nothing no better when you humble down and put yourself under the hand of mighty God. Our dear Heavenly Father, do you hear me? When we say, not my will, but thy will be done. If this be the day that old Bishop Eddie Cheney has to leave this world, I want to do it holding under that unchangeable hand. I want to do it trusting Jesus. I want to do it uh, woo, with the blood of Christ applied to my life. I don't want to get down in that situation where I begin to complain, where I begin to question God and say, why, Lord, do I got to live? through this like I don't have enough on me. Now why do I got to worry about this over here and worry about that over that? Listen, you can't add one cubic to your structure by worrying, so you might as well to quit worrying and begin to praise God. Come up out of that couch of doubt, uh, that bed of pity. Uh, raise your hands up and shout glory, hallelujah, for I am a child of the King. Woo, I got real blood flowing through my veins. Whether I go or whether I stay I'm a winner either way do you hear me today if you're born again if you bathed in the blood I'm telling you you're a winner either way either way it goes but go out singing and shouting the victory dance sharing your testimony
testimony everywhere you can, letting people know uh, how much you love Jesus. Overcoming the attack of the enemy in your life uh, can be done by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Uh, we're more than just an overcomer. You're more than just conquerors through Christ Jesus. Uh, woo, praise God. So what is it that keeps you from picking up your cross, denying self, and following after Jesus? Get it settled, friends. Get it settled. High-hearted servants won't make it. There are going to be a whole lot of people say, but Lord... Lord, Lord, didn't we do this? Didn't we do that in your name? And he's going to say that day, he will profess to them, I never knew you. Listen, right now, right there where you're at, uh, if you've uh, slacked on, on obeying the Lord, if you've heard his voice, you've heard him, you belong to him, you're his sheep. If you've heard him say, follow me, listen, deny yourself right now, right there, repent, pick up the cross and follow out of Jesus. Uh, put your hand in the hand of the man that can lead you. Woo! to the promised land. When I'm close to heaven Daddy lived his life with two kids and a wife Well you do what you must do But he showed me enough of what it takes To get me through Love you and we're praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho, and uh, I'm getting a chance here now to, I've been pretty busy, but I'm getting a chance to listen to that program that was done tonight, straight to the point, and uh, I posted in the chat room there to all be praying, praying for you all, and praying for you and for the ministry and everything that's going on, and uh, I'm keeping all of us in prayer as many times each day, and I thank God and Jesus for helping all of us. Thanks for having this testimony line and for the programs that you do, and I uh, no, it helps a lot of people, and, uh, boy, praise the Lord, and uh, I'll be calling in calls when I can, and, uh, 
you know, saying prayers for us constantly because we need those prayers. I'm learning more how to live by faith, and we've got all this stuff going on with the says with Ed and Isabel, and claiming it's holy healing of my mom's heart, and, you know, we can say, you know, a mountain be moved, take it up and cast in the sea. If we have faith as small as a mustard seed, it will be done. We have to have faith and believe that God is powerful and working in our lives and that nothing is impossible with God. Father, right now, I want to come to you and pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and for our sicknesses and for our diseases. We thank you, Father, that we can have faith as small as a mustard seed and say, it will not be moved, take it up and cast it in the sea and believe that we will ask for in prayer we will get, and we will receive it. We just thank you, Father, that nothing is impossible with you. I want to pray and ask for you to please help the ministries. Please bless Brother Bishop Eddie Cheney and Pauline Cheney and his family there and Chris and Ann and everybody back there through the ministries. Please bless the ministries, meet the needs of the ministries, and uh, help them as they're going out doing the revivals and all these different things. Work through the ministries powerfully so that many people can turn their hearts and lives over to your son, Jesus. Father, there's not a whole lot of people pre preaching the true word. A lot of people like to tickle ears and say sin's okay. And you don't have to be a doer of the word and stuff. But I know that we're preaching the true message from the Bible, that we're supposed to be out there preaching to others and helping needy people and showing the love of Jesus to others. And we're supposed to supposed to be uh, you know, laying down our life for Jesus and the gospel as well as getting sin out of our life, the homosexuality, the pornography, the drug use, the drunkenness, and the sins have to go. We have to be born again. Just help us, Father, to please help people get saved, truly get saved and get born again and off that wide road so they can make it to heaven. Please bless our ministries, Father, to touch many people and help get them saved. And thank you for meeting the needs of our, in our lives and the ministries. Thank you for helping us with the visas with Edna and Isabel. We claim total healing of my mom's heart. We're claiming 100% healing of my food allergy problems. I thank you for touching and healing anyone hearing this and needs healing. And just for meeting all of our needs and taking care of us. In our lives, Philippians 4.19 does say that you will meet all of our needs according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And I just love you, Father. I thank you so much for healing and helping us all and helping the ministries. And I pray this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. God bless all. God is good. Let Jesus in your heart, your achy, breaky heart. He's the only man who understands, and he will hear your heart, your achy, breaky heart. He's the only man I know who can. They nailed him to the tree, he died for you and me, so we wouldn't have to live in sin. And sickness and disease, he took for you and me, if we would just put our trust in him. Let Jesus save your heart, your achy, breaky heart. He's the only man who understands, and he will heal your heart, your achy, breaky heart. He's the only man I know who can. Yeah. For three days he lay With a promise that he would rise again On that third and final day The stone was rolled away And he rose triumph for the sin So fall down on your knees And ask the Lord please To help you find a better way Now you will be okay Leave Satan far behind Telling you were walking out on him let Jesus in your heart, your achy, breaky heart. He's the only man who understands. And he will hear your heart, your achy, breaky heart. He's the only man I know who can. For three days he laid 
with the promise that he would rise again. On that third and final day, the stone was rolled away, and he rose triumph over sin. Let Jesus heal your heart, my friend. Yeah. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Let Jesus heal your aching, breaking heart. Yeah. Give it to him. All of it. Well, praise God. Too many people respond to Jesus with a lack of commitment for him. Do you hear me today? They're afraid to commit. Listen, I hear things like this all the time. To me, Jesus says, and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and his children, his brother and his sister. He cannot be my disciple. Look in the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 26. And please, friends, know I would rather that a friend come by and get me and say, come on, let's go do something for Jesus. If I'm down in my flesh, I can't hardly go. Surely I've got a brother, a sister in the body of Christ that would come and say, come on. Let's die on the battlefield. Let's go out with a hoorah. Let's go out praising Jesus. Let's go out singing songs. Let's go out woo, sharing our testimony and telling the goodness and grace and mercy of God. Now listen, friends, I know I've got a lot of people in my life. Tonight, uh, last night, our prayer list was about 56 names uh, of people that say the world's given them negative and bad reports. Uh, we lost a brother last night, this morning at about 3.03 a.m. in the morning. Brother Sam Vanderbilt went on to be with Jesus, uh, the ultimate healing. Uh, but I can say one thing about Brother Sam Vanderbilt. Uh, honey, he died on fire for God. Uh, he drove those old church buses, him and my wife. Life. Uh, he complained about his body hurting, but he still went and done it anyway. Do you hear me? He still done it anyway. He told the truth. He stood on the truth. He said, it don't look like it. It don't feel like it, but I'm healed. Uh, do you hear me? Uh, as an elder, uh, as an older man in his flesh and body than I am, uh, he gained my respect uh, when I would see him uh, holding his legs and rubbing them, and I'd say, what's wrong, Brother Sam? Uh, and we'd be taking 30, 40 kids uh, down there to Cookville, Tennessee at the Christian Kid Camp. He'd say, pray for my legs. Uh, Brother Eddie, they bothered me real bad. Pray for me that I can get the strength from Jesus to go on. We would pray, and he would go on just the same anyway. And you know, I told him something one time, as I've told many of my brothers in the body of Christ and sisters that have traveled with me. I said, if I die on these highways and byways, uh, taking this gospel to a lost and hurting world, just bury me, uh, turn me over to the corner, whatever state I'm in, uh, and let it be at that, and you keep on keeping on. Uh, and I told them many that traveled with me, they were sick on heart monitors and taking about 15 different kinds of medicine. Uh, they said, Brother Eddie, uh, they only give me three months to live. Uh, I said, well, let's burn up the highways preaching the gospel. Uh, I want you to know that God healed some of them. Uh, some of them got a natural uh, touch in their body and their stomach. 
still alive today, but others he chose to take home. I'm a winner. Are you a winner whether I go or whether I stay? Honey, I'm talking about a made up mind. You see, to deny self means that you can't worry about your condition. It's all about Jesus. It's all about uplifting the name of Jesus, not wallowing in self-pity, not wondering when am I going to take my last breath, but knowing that God holds your last breath. Not our will, but his will to be done this day. Honey, I'm telling you today, grab a hold of the word of God, build upon the rock of Jesus Christ, and when the storm comes, your house will stand. I'm talking about quit listening to the world. Quit partaking of the worldly ways. Get a made up mind. Reach up, reach out. Take a hold of the unchangeable hand of the great I am. Woo! Let death find you busy for the kingdom of God. Not laying in a bed of pity or sitting on the couch of doubt. And when somebody comes by and says, hey, you want to go to church? Well, I would, but I don't feel good. Honey, that's where you need to be. Where two or three are gathered up, Jesus is in the midst. Don't forget to assemble yourselves together in the breaking of the word of God, such as the matter as some has. That's what's going on in the world. Satan has deceived so many, and now what do they do? Instead of telling one another the truth, uh, they begin to show pity back and forth with one another. Next thing you know, they got a whole group of people just waiting uh, uh, to dig their own grave. Uh, oh, I can't go to singing. Oh, I can't come Brother Eddie. I can't go on the road and help you put up that old tent. I can't come and play my guitar. I can't come and share my testimony because I'm just going to, I'm hurting in my body. Honey, you're going to hurt if you stay at home or if you get up and do something for Jesus and be assured unless Jesus reach down and take you in a moment of blink, a twinkling of an eye, every man's going to face death. But as I walk by the shadow of the valley of death, I'll fear no evil. Do you hear me today, friends, arise in the name of Jesus. Hold on to your victory. Woo! In Jesus' name, I'm a winner whether I go or whether I stay. Now listen to me, friends. A lot of people get mad at me. They say, uh, oh, Bishop Eddie, you're against medicine. No, I'm against uh, putting medicine in front of Jesus. I'm against putting anything, money, children, women, wives. I'm, uh, I'm against anything that would be blocking you from your true salvation. I'm against anything of the world and the worldly devices. For I know, I said I know, that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You want victory today? Sell out to Jesus. Get a made up mind. Whether you go or whether you stay, take every opportunity you get to do something for the glory of God. Begin to praise God. Begin to worship God in spirit and truth. Get up out of that bed in the name of Jesus and begin to overcome the enemy with the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Woo! And the truth will stand when the world's on fire. And we lost a, a good warrior, Brother Sam Vanderbilt at 303 this morning in the AM hour. But heaven gained another warrior angel. You have angels camped about you, my friend. I want you to know this war that we're fighting is real. The devil is real. The devil is real. How many times do I got to say this? The devil is real. If he can get me or you to let down, if he can get us to give up, if he can get us to worry about the condition that this flesh is in, then he's gaining ground. But I come with good news. I come to tell you that you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I come to tell you that you have royal blood if you're born again. I said if you're born again, he that lives in you is greater than he that is in the world, but you must choose this day whom will you serve. Are you going to listen to self and reason out what's wrong and how you can do this and how you can do that? Or are you going to get up and move and operate your faith in God? You've read the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. I heard you amen it a minute 
my time out there, friends, listen to me. Whatever denomination you may be in, when the truth is wrung out, uh, honey, his sheep will hear his voice, uh, and no other voice will they hear. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, if you're listening to this broadcast, whether live or by way of the archive, and you're tired of being sick and tired, I'm telling you right now to stand up. Uh, stand up for gold or silver have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee this day. And that is the word of God, the truth shall make you free. Reach up, reach out, take a hold of the unchangeable hand of the great I am, uh, honey, and begin to apply the word of God in your life. Uh, and I'll tell you the truth. Uh, if God choose to take you today, go rejoicing, go rejoicing, knowing, 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 Woo! Not in my will, but thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Continuing to give our precious Lord and Savior the glory and the honor and the praise that is due Him and only Him. He must be number one in your life. So get your minds made up because I'm praying and sending forth the Holy Ghost conviction drawing power. Yes, right now. Rise right now. I don't care if you take medicine. I don't care if you're in a sauna. I don't care if you're listening in a hospital hospital a bed right now get up on the edge raise your hands up toward heaven and begin to pray not my will but thy will be done in the name of Jesus begin to praise God if you got to write it on a tablet begin to sing psalms if you got to hum it they may have your mouth sewed together this morning they may have you on a ventilator but your ears can hear I'm telling you today that there is victory in Jesus and we are the healed of God but I know some Sometimes it don't look like it. I know sometimes it don't feel like it. I know sometimes uh, it's easy to say, well, today's my last day. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm about to go. Uh, I'm about to go. Honey, you don't know. You do not know. For if there is life, there is hope. It's this simple. Surrender your all in all to Jesus and allow His will to be done in your life. As I ask the question, what keeps us from following Jesus wholeheartedly? Search yourself. Repent. If you fall in short, just simply repent. But you tell me, friends, you tell me, as I get ready to say goodbye, I want you to answer, leave your comments in the chat room. You tell me, what better way to leave this world than to leave doing something, saying something, singing something, preaching the Word of God? What better way to leave this world than holding on to the hand of the great I Am, Jesus Christ? There is none, my friend. I know it's hard. I've been there and I'm there now. I know that doctors mean well and I know that they can sometimes tell just by common sense when the flesh is wearing out. But I'm here to tell you I'm getting a new body. I'm here to tell you I'm going to walk on street of gold. I'm here to tell you tonight I'm going where I'll never grow old. I'll never hurt nor pain again. Honey, I'm telling you, don't you cry when I leave. You rejoice. Do you hear me? You cry when those babies come in. But I said you rejoice when a brother or sister in the body of Christ goes on to be with Jesus. Let's get this thing right. Let's stand up and be who God has called us to be. I'm telling you today, friends, get Get up out of the couch of doubt. Get up off of the bed of doom and gloom and begin to be who God has called you to be and be that to the last breath that God gives you. Whatever it is. Be found doing something for our precious Lord and Savior. I pray today that God would give you the strength to help your unbelief that you may believe. I pray today that you, those who have fallen short, those who have faced pure hell today, would realize that there is an armor that you must put on and a shield of faith that you must hold up. And it will dart off all 
It didn't say some of. It said all the fiery darts of the enemy. Apply the word of God to your life today, friend. You can't fix this. I can't fix this. The world can't fix this. But God's will be done in your life. We love you. We encourage those of you that are up and about, those of you that are on fire for God, those of you that are sold out, those of you that have denied self, picked up your cross and following out of Jesus, don't you let go. You keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. For the promise is nigher today than it was yesterday. You continue to pray for us. We'll continue to pray for you. And if you can, you pray about how to help this radio ministry. With your presence, your phone calls, a testimony call once a day. Man, you would, you would think I was asking people to pull their teeth out. Nobody listens. Nobody believes the men and women of God. But I'm telling you, the word of God, you are an overcomer with the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Please, pick up the phone. If you're listening live or by way of the archive, and just simply dial 1-931-229-0768. Let the world know that you're not ashamed to stand up and proclaim His holy and righteous name, our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let the world know that God's not dead. He's alive and working actively in the lives of His people. You pray and obey God. And try to explain to me why God would tell you not to help a ministry share the gospel for those of you that choose not to call. You explain to me in the comment box if you can why God would tell you not to help someone preaching the truth. Not to help a ministry that's trying to reach out to a lost and hurting world and sick people that need Jesus. As we reach out with the truth and tell them to get up out of the bed of doubt and stand on the promises of God. What would hinder thee from helping a brother? For the word of God says when a brother asks you to go a mile, you go twine. A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. May God bless you and your family as you continue to bless others. We hope and pray we see you next time right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. But if you're looking for ear-tickling services, as long as I'm alive, you're not going to find them here. I fear God, and I love God, and I don't want no one to miss heaven. I don't want your blood on my hands. So as long as God gives me breath, I'll continue to stand on the word and the promises of God. We are the healed of God. Get up and walk in your called victorious life. In the name of Jesus, be that light, be that city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. We'll see you next time, friends. Keep those prayers coming. And take a heart that's broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. I can take a soul that's in sick, make it white as the snow.
can't walk on these waters or calm the troubled sea. But I know a man who can. I can't cause blind eyes to open or make the lane to walk again. But I know a